Hello class and welcome to lecture 2 of your accounting 101 class. Now what I want to emphasize to you before I get started is that you must read the chapter. Okay, You need to read the chapter and you need to listen to my lecture. Also, my lectures do not always follow the same sequence as the chapter. So it's best that you do one at a time. You can review the lecture and then read the chapter or read the chapter and then view the lecture. I don't have any specific order for which you do it. Just do not do it at the same time because again, my lecture does not follow the same sequence as the chapter, okay? In chapter one, we looked at the accounting equation. Okay, we looked at the accounting equation. We said that our assets equal our liabilities plus our stockholders' equity. Forgive my spelling. Okay, so we said our assets equal our liabilities and our stockholders' equity. And we looked at how transactions affected this equation. But before we do an example, we further expanded this this equation, and we said that assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity minus dividends plus fees earned minus expenses. So that's what we looked at in chapter one. And we looked at a few transactions and how they affected this equation. So let's take an example here. Let's say we bought a vehicle for $20,000 paying a down payment of $5,000 cash and financing the remainder with a loan. Okay? So this is our transaction. Let's take this step by step. First, we see that we bought a vehicle. Okay, We know from chapter 1 that a vehicle is something that we're going to use to help us generate profit or revenues for our company. So the vehicle is an asset. We have an asset called a vehicle. And we know that we are gaining, we are gaining this asset. So we're going to add $20,000 to our assets. We made a down payment of $5,000 cash. We know that cash is an asset as well. Cash is an asset as well. And since we are making a down payment, we're giving up our cash. We are giving someone else our cash, so we're depleting our cash. Cash is going out the door. So we have an asset called cash, and we are reducing our cash, so we're going to minus it, $5,000. Okay? So now we have assets equal 15000 Why 15000 Because we have a positive 20000 we have a negative 5,000 that gives us net assets of 15,000. The next side of this is that we are financing the remainder of the, the vehicle with a loan. Okay? We know that a loan is a liability because it's a debt that we owe. A loan is a liability because it's a debt that we owe. So I'm going to say loan payable because we need to pay it back. Payable means we need to pay it back. Now we are gaining this loan. We're adding this loan to our business. We're adding a liability to our business. So we're going to put a plus sign for our liabilities. Since the car costs 20000 we put $5,000 down in cash. The remainder that's left to finance is 15000 So our loan is going to be for 15000 So we have assets of 15000 and now we have liabilities of 15000 
and our equation is in balance, okay? Because we have positive 15,000 on the asset side and on the liabilities and stockholders equity side, we have a positive 15,000 as well. So this is what we looked at in, in chapter one. And this is also what we're gonna look at in chapter two. The only difference in chapter two is that the way how we have this presented here is not proper accounting. These transactions actually need to go into individual accounts. That's why it's called accounting. That's why we have record keeping. We're gonna keep all these transactions in individual accounts that can identify them by what they are. So for chapter two, we're gonna analyze transactions and we're gonna post them to specific accounts. Now, the proper accounting cycle is that we analyze the transaction. That's what we just did here. We post them to what we call a journal, which is our initial book of entry for our transactions. And then we post them to a ledger, okay? Now, I find it easier to teach this course by reversing it a little, where we're gonna post to the ledger, then we're gonna look at posting to the journal, okay? That's not proper accounting. Again, proper accounting is analyze the transaction, post to the journal, then post to the ledger. But for this chapter, we're gonna post to the ledger, then look at posting to the journal, and at, when we practice some more, and we get comfortable analyzing transactions and deciding how they affect our accounting records, then we'll do the accounting cycle in the correct order, okay? I just wanna make that clear. Before we continue analyzing transactions and posting them to accounts, I want to introduce you to the accounts that we're actually gonna be using. And we call that a chart of accounts. And you can find an example on page 55, and I'll also go through it in this lecture. A chart of accounts. A chart of accounts are just the names of the accounts that exist in the accounting records of a business. Our chart of accounts are the names of the accounts that we are gonna maintain or that exist in the accounting records for any business, okay? The specific accounts that we're gonna look at now, there are a wide range of accounts. There are lots of accounts that can exist. But for purposes of this chapter, the ones that we're more likely gonna use are as follows. We have our assets, and under our assets, we're gonna have cash, which we spoke about. We're gonna have accounts receivable. We know that cash is currency, right? Hard, cold, money. Accounts receivable, we said that accounts receivable exists when someone owes our company money. Someone owes our company money for something we gave to them, usually a service or a product. They have not paid us yet, in cash, so we have not received cash yet, but they promised to pay us in the future. Now, because they promised to give us cash in the future, that is an asset because they owe something to our company. So we call that an accounts receivable. And we talked about that in chapter one. We have supplies. We spoke about that, which can be your pens, your pencils, your staple machine, um, anything that we're gonna use in the business. We have an account that we're gonna look at called prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance, and prepaid insurance is when you pay for your insurance up front. So you have not incurred any costs for your insurance yet, but you have, well you don't have to, but you pay it up front. Take for example your car insurance, okay? You pay your car insurance at the beginning of the month. You have not actually used the insurance service yet. You're gonna use the insurance service throughout the month, but you haven't used it yet, but still you pay the insurance company up front. That is an asset to your company. Why? Because if you use five days worth of insurance and you cancel your policy, the insurance company will reimburse you for the remaining days that you did not use. Okay, they will give you your cash back. So until you use up your insurance, they're essentially just holding on to your money. Okay, so we call that prepaid insurance. 
Next one we talked about in class for chapter one, which is land and office equipment. And forgive my spelling. Okay? So those are some asset accounts that we're going to look at. We have our liabilities, which we know are debts that our company owes. And under there, we're going to look at accounts payable. We talked about accounts payable in chapter one, but again, accounts payable are when we, when my business owes somebody else for something that they provided to me. So I am in debt. Okay? Account payable. And the next one we're going to call, we're going to probably look at is unearned rent. Unearned rent. So unearned rent comes into play when we are in the business of renting properties. So our business is renting properties. That's the service we provide. If somebody pays us up front, somebody pays us up front our rent, but they have not yet used up the rent. So let's say it's January 1st and we make a rent payment and that rent payment is for the entire month of January. But that person has not actually lived in the apartment or occupied the office for January. So we have not earned that rent yet. We're basically holding on to their cash. And then as they use our property, our apartment or our office, then we've earned that rent. But until they actually reside in there and use up those days and stay in that office or that apartment those days, that rent is not ours. So we call it unearned rent because we haven't earned that money yet. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we look at some transactions. Next is stock holders equity stockholders equity so under here we're gonna look at our capital stock our retained earnings and dividends these are all the accounts that we're gonna look at under stockholders equity next we have what we call revenues remember I told you that revenues are the same thing as our fees earned so under revenues, we're going to look at fees earned. And lastly, we have our expenses. Our expenses. Our expenses, we're going to look at wages expense. We're going to look at rent expense. We're going to look at utilities expense. We're going to look at supplies expense. And we're going to look at one more called miscellaneous expense. And I'll explain that to you when we look at some transactions. All right, so these are the account names that we're going to use when we start posting our transactions to certain accounts in our accounting records. Okay? Now, for purposes of this course, for purposes of Dr. White's course, this might not be the same in other courses, but for my course, our ledger... Our ledger is represented by T accounts, okay? And you can see in my Excel file here, I have a T. So I have a line going horizontally, and I have a line going vertically. We call this a T account. For purposes of this class, our ledger is going to be T accounts, okay? Now, we're going to post our transactions, or we're going to make our transactions in these T accounts. On the left side which is this side, and we're going to make transactions on the right side. So we're going to put transactions on the left side of this T account and on the right side of this T account. And remember, this T account is our ledger. Okay? Now, when I post a transaction on the left side, I call it a debit. When I post a transaction on the left side, I call it a debit. When I post a transaction on the right side, I call it a credit. When I post a transaction on the right side, I call it a credit. And right here at the top of the account, I always put the name of the account. So over here we saw one of our accounts under assets is cash. So I'm not going to write asset here, I'm just going to write cash. I already know that it's an asset, but I need to put the name of the account at the top of the account so that I know which account I'm making my entries in. Okay? So we got that. Our ledger is represented by a T account, which is just a T. We're going to post transactions on the left and the right side, depending on the transaction. We always want to put the name of the account 
And any transaction we post on the left side is called a debit. So this side, we're making debits. And this side, the right side, we're making credits. Okay? Now, here are some rules that I want you to know. Here are some rules that I want you to know. And you have to memorize this or learn it. However you're going to remember it, you just have to remember it. Okay? You just have to remember it. For my asset accounts, asset accounts, for my asset accounts, so that's my cash, my accounts receivable, my supplies, my prepaid insurance, my land, my office equipment. When I want to add an asset, I want to add an asset to my book, to my accounting records, I am going to make a debit. So when I want to add an asset to my book or my accounting records, I'm going to make a debit. So if you go back to our T account, we see here we have cash. And we know that cash is an asset. When I want to add an asset to my book, I'm going to make a debit, which is a transaction on the left side. Okay? So I'm going to make a debit to my cash account when I want to add an asset, okay? Now, in my asset account, if I want to subtract an asset from my accounting record, so I want to decrease my assets, I'm gonna make a credit, okay? So to decrease my assets, I'm gonna make a credit. So in my asset account here, cash again, if I want to decrease my cash, I'm gonna make an entry on the right side, which I know is a credit. So to decrease my asset, which is cash, I'm going to make a, a credit, which is the right side of the account. Okay? Those are my assets. Let's look at my liabilities now. Oops, I don't want that to be like that. My liabilities. My liabilities are going to be the opposite. My liabilities are going to be the opposite. If I want to add a liability to my accounting records, if I want to add a liability to my accounting records, I am going to make a credit. So I have my accounts payable and I have my unearned rent. If I want to add an account payable to my liabilities, I'm going to make a credit. So let's go here. And let's put the name of the account, accounts payable. I know this is a liability. And I know that the left side is debit. And I know that the right side is credit. If I want to add an account payable or add a liability to my accounting records, I'm going to make a, you got it, a credit, which is on the right side. Okay? And similarly, if I want to make a, reduction of liability. So I want to get rid of a liability. I'm going to make a debit. I'm going to make a debit. So here I know that my debits come on the left side. If I want to reduce my liability called account payable, I'm going to make a debit to this account. Okay? Next, let's look Next, sorry, let's look at stockholders' equity. Stockholders' equity. So for stockholders' equity, it works the same way as liabilities. It works the same way as liabilities. If I want to increase my stockholders' equity, so let's say I gained an owner of my company, I'm going to make a credit. So I gain an owner. Someone bought stock in my company, I gain an owner, I need to increase my stockholder's equity. So let's look at our account. So if I go here and I type, um, I'm going to type capital stock, which is one of the accounts under stockholder's equity. If I want to increase my capital stock, I'm going to do what? Make a credit, which is on the right side. Okay, and similarly, 
if I want to decrease my capital stock, I'm going to make a debit, which is on the left side. If I want to decrease my capital stock, I'm going to make a debit, which is on the left side. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Remember I told you in chapter one that a dividend is almost like giving back ownership to the person that bought the stock, okay? And in the accounting equation, we see that dividends have a what? They have a minus sign. They have a minus sign, okay? So we see liabilities as a positive right here. We see stockholders' equity as a positive, but dividends has a negative. So because of that, dividends works opposite to our stockholders' equity. So to increase our stockholders' equity, we made a credit. To decrease it, we made a debit. For dividends, we do the opposite. We do the same thing that we did for our assets. To increase our dividends, we make a debit. To decrease our dividends, we make a credit. Okay? So let's look here. Let's say I have a dividends account. To increase my dividends, it's going to be the opposite of my capital stock account. I'm going to make a debit, which is the left side. To decrease it, I'm going to make a credit, which is on the right side. Okay? Remember, stockholders' equity, I make a credit to increase it. I make a debit to decrease it. But dividends, which comes under stockholders' equity, has a negative sign. So that means that since it has a negative sign, we have to do the opposite for it. Okay? So make sure you get that. Next, we're going to look at our revenues. Our revenues. So we know that our revenues come under our stockholders' equity. Okay, our revenues come on under our stockholders' equity, and our revenues have a plus sign, which means revenues work the same way that stockholders' equity does. Okay, so since, stock, since revenues, which are fees earned, work the same way as our stockholders' equity, to increase my revenues, I'm going to make a credit. To decrease my revenues, I'm going to make a debit. Okay. So let's look at our ledger, which is represented by our T accounts. We're going to call this fees earned, which is our revenue account. To increase it, I'm going to make a credit, which is on the right side. To decrease it, I'm going to make a debit, which is on the left side. Okay, And you see it works the same way as my capital stock, which is my stockholder's equity. Okay. That's my revenues, my fees earned. Last but not least, I'm going to look at my expenses. I'm going to look at my expenses. Oops, that one. Let's try to make this look right. I just want it to go back. Okay, there we go. Now our expenses. If we look at our equation again, our expenses come under our stockholders' equity. Remember I said that. Our expenses come under our stockholders' equity, but my expenses have a negative sign. My expenses have a negative sign. So they are not going to work the same way as my stockholders' equity. They're going to be the opposite. So for my expenses, if I want to add an expense to my accounting records, if I want to add an expense to my accounting records, I am going to make a debit. And if I want to remove an expense from my accounting records, so I want to reduce my expenses, I'm going to make a credit. So let's grab an account. One of the accounts here is wages expense. Wages expense. So I go to my ledger, which is the same thing as my T account. I'm going to put the name of the account, wages expense. If I want to increase it, I'm going to make a debit which is on the left side. Remember, a debit is on the left side. And if I want to make a credit, I'm going to put an entry on the right side. If I want to make a credit, 
I'm going to put an entry on the right side. Okay? So that's basically what I need you to know for now. And what I'm going to do next is we're going to go through some actual transactions. We're going to go through some actual transactions and see how to post these to our account and records. And that starts on page 63 and that's going to be in our next video. So this video is going to end right now and we're going to start a new video looking at our transactions.